Hello and welcome back to another Stranger Objects tutorial. My name is David Samuel Drayton and I welcome you to the show. Today I want to talk about adding topography to your scene. It took me a while to find out how to do so in Blender and as a Cinema 4D user we are spoiled when it comes to topography. It's a bit different in Blender but fear not, I'm gonna show you how it works, where the buttons are and what you need to press. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So starting off a fresh scene, what we need to do is we will open, oh, let me just, before we start, let me just turn on my shortcuts so you can follow along. All right. So before we start, um, we're going to add from the add menu, pressing shift a some text. And if you want to edit text, you need to go into edit mode and then you can start typing out your words, whatever you want. For me, it will be stranger and I go, I will exit this and I will uh, keep it as, as it is for now. So if you want to change your font, right in Blender, you have to go over to the right side. It was kind of tricky for me at the very first time when I added some font, I was very frustrated because I couldn't find things to change. So I had to watch a tutorial. So if you're a Cinema 4D user, you can be happy because I already had to paint for you. All you need to do is go to the objects property window and select the, uh, the font from the entry font. And from regular, I will choose my my font of choice you will find the font and this is something if you're on a Mac I'm not sure how it is on a PC but there's also a font folder somewhere on PC on Windows um, on Mac it's under users you go to your name or your admin or whatever account you have David Drayton right there then you go to uh, library and here we go. Here we got fonts. As you can see, Blender doesn't forget. It keeps them in the recent. So whenever you come back, you just have to click that folder it will immediately jump over. That's a very handy feature. I love it. Um, let me see. My preferred folder for this tutorial is Volkswagen. Here we go. All right. That's my font right there. And I press seven, go into top view and make a duplicate and move it just slightly down and go back into edit mode. Shift A so you can select everything. And I'll type in objects, exit edit mode and scale this fella a little up so it matches the other part like this move it down G and Y to be somewhere. Yeah, to be somewhere around here. I think that's fine. All right, um, both selected. We are gonna press R, X and type 90. Now we can see that we've put them into place. If we want to have them in the center, all you need to do is go into the properties tab or property window and choose instead left, you go to center. The same for stranger center. Um, you can type stranger objects when you do it, but it would be an honor, but <laughs> you don't have to, of course. Yeah, anyhow. So um, here we go. Now we got the text, uh, but how do we get thickness into our text? There is the geometry tab and we can extrude the text. Here we go. Just extrude it. Now we have thickness and how much do we have on this one? It's then just copy this and paste it in here. 0.15 for me. Again, you can do whatever you like. Let me just see it from the front, maybe slightly move it up to be a little closer. All right, that looks good, like it. And last but not least, we want to add a modifier to give those round edges. And we will add a, oh, we don't add, we add a bevel. There we go. Same here, if you can, oh, see? I didn't know that because I'm using hard up so often that I just it's so natural that I press Q and look and, and look for things that are already there but it beveled but it's not a modifier so I think it must be a part of this and if we go in here oh yeah here we go you can put the bevel in uh, uh, manually or if you have hard ups you just press Q and hard ups will help you to make it look awesome all right, so now we got 3D type that looks pretty good. And last but not least, we want to add some materials to that. Or maybe we're going to start with the lighting first. Um, I'll because I already have something in mind, I will add a spotlight, but you can use any light you want. Go into the side view, 
move them back slightly here we go put them in the middle as you can see they're not the same so um, maybe that's because of the scale so maybe I just reset my scale and here we go now they're both the same size again um, this is something to be aware of if you scale something like this and you add the same values as the other object then the scale has an influence on all the other values as well as on the bevel and stuff like that so you should always apply your scale at least so you're not running into troubles if you have any issues just apply the scale and you're back for good so let me just grab my light and put it up here and maybe we want to turn it in slightly for this i'm using eevee so that's fine you can see my light source is way too weak we have to give it more power so 1500 that looks much better if you ask me and i want to give uh, my background orange make it nice and bright you can see it has a nice influence on my entire scene orange all right something orangey maybe more orangey yellowish something like this makes me happy and the last but not least the thing we want to do is adding in a material for our object so we're going to select the object we can stay in render mode that's totally fine we're changing that window type you just grab it and you drag it up and then you choose another window type and therefore we are using the shader editor there are no materials yet and we want to assign one for stranger which is add new now we have one assigned if we want the same material i'm going to call this typo typography there we go typography and i will give it something with a yellowish or more orangey style and because we want to have it shiny we're going to reduce the roughness to make it more plastic here we go maybe just a little roughness in there always a little roughness in there and if you want to use the same the same material for objects all you need to do is select your object or the, the geometry you wanted and go not add new but click on that left part and choose the same material for topography the cool thing is if you make changes on that because it's I think it's an instance um, it will make changes to everything else as well so um, one more thing I would like to add because I want to use some subsurface scattering in my scene file I will duplicate that light shift D and rotate it up like so from the back to give it a nice backlighting maybe something with a steeper angle grab it and put it down here uh see what that looked like oh we don't have a camera yet so we're going to add this later i think that's okay but the upper light isn't looking so convincing if you ask me so i'll if you go up here and drag it out like this oh, a little nitpicky right there so if you drag it out like that you can add another window let me just turn on everything else and give this oh no not here but here i guess was it there oh i can't remember there's a way to manipulate this oh there we go you have to grab the arrow so if the arrow is highlighted you can change the size of the spotlight so just make this slightly bigger something like that and in the light setting itself i want to make some changes because i think this is too harsh as far as i remember there is a way to to make changes to that i remember i've done it before oh it's over here it's called blend we want to make it smoother so we're going to blend it even further so we're going to blend it all the way up to one um the same for the other lights select this and we want to blend this one as well to give it some a smoother transition from shadow to light that look kind of nice i think the colors are a little off so we're going to adjust them first give that a more orangey tone and if you want to change your background color you don't have to always come back here if you work already in the in the shader editor you can come in here and choose instead of object you choose world and now we have control over the background color so um, let me come in here and do the same thing give this maybe something more yellowish maybe a little brighter something like that I think it was okay before. I just go back. There we go. Yeah. All right. You can play a little longer with that, but for now, I think you get the idea. So coming back, selecting the object, and we select object from the shader window again, and we will add some 
subsurface scattering. As you can see, there is no effect because we didn't type in anything yet. It's 0.1 and now the letters are looking a little more juicier. 0.25 now they look like candy and this is exactly what I was aiming for maybe we can play around with the colors in the background or with the object or play around with the light the good thing about this uh, is that EV works in real time and everything looks insanely cool add a camera and here we go and as I mentioned in previous videos if you have your quick favorites um, pressing Q um, bring up the quick favorites and then you can align active camera to view here we go now we have aligned that camera to active view and move it back to wherever we want we can also have the cinema 4d behavior by going into view mode and lock camera view and now we can play around to our liking turn this off because i want to have more of our camera let me just turn it back on for all you cinema 4d guys and find an angle i'm happy with and now we can come into the camera settings activate depth of field open this we will leave it as is i'm gonna just lower 0.25 let me just find the distance I'm happy with. All right, here we go. Something like that. Maybe that was way too much. Let me just use 1.8. And if we move it around, uh, increase on our angle, I think that's absolutely fine. So this was a way on how you can come in and make changes to your type. Let me just recap right quick. You will add type or the text object by shift a um, adding text from the menu then select it in the viewport going to the properties of the data or data properties of the text changing your font is from the font menu choose it from the folder over here and navigate to your system's font folder once you've done that blender will keep it in the recents you can make a choice whatever you want let me just use a row bold and italic open font and you can see now i have messed up my entire design thank you for joining me on this tutorial i hope you've learned something stay safe stay healthy and stay happy see you on the next video